you're watching Leicester Music Cast with me, Lindsay, and on the cast today I have with me John Fry, a local singer-songwriter. He's going to be playing us out at the end of the cast, but uh, before that I'm going to have a quick chat with him and uh, find out what's going on in the world of John Fryer. So, hi, hi there John. Hi. Um, I just want to know, firstly really, how many years have you been playing? Uh, well, I've been playing around about, I suppose, about 30 odd years, but in the last five years I've begun playing more at uh, gigs and, uh, and events um, as I got back into it. Uh, having turned 50, I decided it was time I went back out on the road and um, uh, got out and about and did some stuff and began to, uh, to play more regularly. So, yeah, well, a long time, but a short time. <laughs> How did you get started as a singer-songwriter? Well, I, I can be very critical and uh, at the time when I was a, a, a very sarcastic teenager I remember saying to a friend of mine that the stuff that was out there and being played was rubbish and um, he, uh, he... Still came, is, isn't it? Well, it can be. It can be. Uh, of course there are With always... Leicester musicians well, as an exception. Well, of course, of course. But, but he, he challenged me and said, oh, you can't say that unless you can write some of your own, which is a, the right answer, I think. Um, so I began just penciling a few down. Um, I did that for a few years and, and wrote some songs which were okay. But certainly in the last five or six years, because I'm going out and out more, I've written more. So I've become more sort of focused and uh, uh, and written quite a number actually now. So I'm, uh, Do you know the exact number? I don't know the exact number. It must be over 100, I would think, in the last few years. Just because I've, it, it's poured back out of me again, I think. It's been corked up for a bit. Uh, but, I, but I seemed to take to it. When I, when I eventually got writing, I was, I was okay as a writer. And I try, like everyone, to try and better it on the next song. Is there anyone in particular that inspires you as a singer-songwriter? I think, I mean, loads of people really. And, and you would, the obvious list of, of, of bands like the Beatles and, 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 uh, and Status Quo and all sorts of other people. But I think if I had to pin on one, then Justin Haywood from the Blues would be, would be my, my, my all-time hero in terms of songwriting because I think he brought a quality and a feeling to, to songwriting and still does uh, which is not better by anybody but you, you can chuck anybody into the mix with Paul Simon and McCartney and any any of the other good songwriters um, but but Justin I just think has got has got the things that I want to bring uh, and a friend of mine said that I, I, I tend to write Beatles music and Moody Blues lyrics. I'm not quite sure, or one way around or the other, I can't remember, but it doesn't matter to me because actually it's me, but that's what, what goes in comes out. That actually segues nicely into the next question, which is um, Is there any particular themes that you like to write about in particular, or is it all random? Well, I think sometimes you, you, you write about things you know. I mean, that's obviously a good place to start, and, and um, uh, but I don't tend to sort of start off with the theme in my head. I, I write the music first because that's the way that my songwriting goes. I then have a structure to be able to put some words onto. And it might be that during the, the writing of the music I think of a phrase or a sentence or a, a, a feeling, a theme, a style, you know, the music suggests to me, then I'll, I'll go down that route. But quite often I'll, I'll try and discipline myself a bit and write something outside of my uh, experience. So I'll, I'll, I've just written a song recently from the point of view of a, of a lady, which is very interesting because I had to do a lot of thinking about how that might work uh, and I haven't got a lot of stuff to draw on other than the ladies that I know. So yeah, I think um, I think what, that, that's what I try and do is to write things which uh, hopefully, uh, I mean, I like telling stories, so there's a lot of story songs, um, but something which will make a connection because surely that's what part of the musical uh, experience is, to, to connect with the audience and the people that are listening. How would you define your style? Is there any particular genre you connect with? Well, again, I, I mean, I, I, I've got a broad scale of, of, of taste, really. I mean, I, I think yeah, I, I can discount certain genres like thrash metal, which I wouldn't go near. But, it, but, uh, 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 but no, I think... Sorry if there's anyone that uh, no, thrash metal. It's one. wonderful, but not for me. <laughs> not, uh, for not, not for everyone. And certainly not for me. And again, I think you play to your strengths. I mean, I think, um, you know, I, again, I think I would have to highlight Justin Haywood type stuff. Paul Weller is another great, great singer-songwriter, and that quality of that writing. Mm. Because I perform on my own, it's, it's you know, not like I'm going to get a bad, big band sound of any kind. Mm. So uh, I'll go with what I what I've got. But I, mm. but I use all sorts of styles of music: reggae, um, uh, rock and roll, uh, folk, jazz, whatever, whatever, whatever comes really. Um, uh, but it, you know, it, it it can't pigeonhole it because I don't want to be pigeonholed. <laughs> you spend a lot of time writing, but what do you do when you're not writing and performing? 
Well, I mean, like everybody else, you, you have a life outside of that. I actually work with puppets, and that's my, my job, so I'm, I'm actually going around with a puppet on my arm for most of the day, which is all quite fun. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I have a wife and, and, uh, and three grown sons and, uh, and four grandchildren and a dog, and uh, you know, I like to do reading and walking and all the other stuff that people do, TV and whatever. Uh, I'm a massive fan of, uh, uh, of TV detectives like Morse and Lewis. Um, so if I've, if I've got a spare hour, I'll stick that on and watch watch some of those DVDs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just think living life really. I mean, I think there's so much to do in life. And when I turn 50, I thought if I don't start living life now, my time will be limited. So let's go for it. So um, just getting out and about. And as you can tell, talking is another great, great <laughs> joy of mine, which I love to do. Yeah. Oh, it's good, it's good to have you here and have, oh, you, good to be have here. you talking. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to know is uh, you have an album coming out, which I know you told me about earlier. You're working on it yeah. at the moment. Um, so how's that going? Well, I mean, as with all these things, uh, they, they start off as a great idea and, mm. and, um, uh, and then you begin to see some of the pitfalls and things that you've got to mm. sort out. Uh, I, I'm, I've got a wealth of songs to put on this one, so I've actually got 22 that I'm actually trying to scale down to, a, to an album mm. lot. Um, but we're, we're going quite well, we've got all the guitar tracks down, I'm about two thirds through doing my vocal parts. And the idea will be that I'm going to invite friends who are musicians and singers to, uh, to play and sing on the album. So it becomes much more of a sort of collective mix of the styles of people that I like to work with. Um, so if they're not friends with you now, they need to become friends with you. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm open to anybody, and if they're sort of bagpipe players or you know didgeridooists or whatever, you know, more the merrier. And I just want, I really want to, 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 of course, want to get out with the with the album with songs on, but I want to showcase the other people that I know who are really great out there, um, and perhaps don't get the mm. coverage that we say deserve. Yeah, it sounds a bit big-headed because nobody's not everyone's going to buy my album, but it'll be for sale in the shops mm. and, uh, and and other places. So, um, but I just like the process of writing and, and performing and, and then giving it a, an outlet, mm. um, and hopefully it'll sell well. Sounds great, and giving back to other people as well at the same time. Well, yeah. I I just think that we in Leicestershire we need to support our mm. our local musicians, and I've got lots and lots of friends who who play and sing and, and, and perform regularly in, in Leicester and Leicestershire. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the people of Leicester and Leicestershire need to hear and need to know that those people are out there and we need to support them because they're, they're a great bunch of people. Mm -hmm. True words and wise words, actually. There isn't much going on for musicians in Leicester. And this is what Leicester Music Cast is all about. So if you do, and it segues again nicely into what I was going to say right. next, if you do actually want to be on the cast and you want to be a featured band, musician, DJ, whatever your style, whatever your genre, we would love to have you here. Do get in contact at Facebook forward slash Leicester Music Cast. I've also moved into the 21st century just yesterday, and I've got a Twitter page you can contact me at Leicester Music C and you can talk to me about the show, send me any of your ideas, any of your music footage, whatever it is that you want to say. Uh, John's going to play us out in a moment so stay tuned. Until next time, subscribe by the way to the channel and until next time I'll see you again then. Hi, this is uh, this is the song I'm going to play you. Um, it's from the new album, as you might expect, or at least it, I hope it will be on there. And it's called But No. She stood at the bus stop for what seemed like hours. Would he arrive with some chocolates or flowers, but no He didn't arrive at all The men in that queue for the cinema waiting she suddenly knew that she hated this dating, but no, he didn't arrive at all. Why did her choices all turn out so badly? Listening to voices
horses who all clamoured madly. Surely she'd soon find a lovely prince charming could just disappoint it. It's all so alarming and no. Chocolates or flowers, but no. 